Ja, zu. Welcome to this service on Pentecost Sunday and we will start with our first hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. <coughs>
there's a much nicer tune to that, Lady Margaret. Sorry? There is a much nicer tune to that. Please tell the maestro. <laughs> Jesus promised that he is present whenever people meet in his name. So let us greet one another as God's family. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanks, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Amen. O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. Your, your praise reaches reach up to, to the heavens. heavens. Before the mountains were made, or before you had even formed the earth and the world, from, from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The Lord our God is worthy to receive glory and honour and power. For he, he has created and redeemed us. Our second hymn is Come Down, O Love Divine. Oh! 
Please be seated. <clears throat> we ask God's forgiveness. Let us in silence remember our own faults and failings. Heavenly Father, we are very sorry for all the things we have done and said and thought that have been wrong. We are sorry that we have thought of others and not of others. We are sorry that we have done and wanted instead of what you wanted us to do. We ask you to forgive us and to help us to be the people you would like us to be. We ask this for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. May Almighty God forgive us and help us to follow Jesus' way of life and guide us with his Holy Spirit. The Collect for today. God, who at this time has touched the hearts of thy faithful people by sending to them the light of the Holy Spirit, Grant that by the same Spirit they have a right judgment in all things, and evermore rejoice in thy holy comfort, through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now our readings for today. Uh, Graham is going to read from the Acts of the Apostles, which gives the story of what happened to the disciples on this day. <coughs> yes, this, this reading is taken from Acts 2. 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious people who had come from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because all of them had heard the believers talking in their own languages. In amazement and wonder they exclaimed, these people who are talking like this are Galileans. How is it then that all of us hear them speaking in our own native languages? We are from Parthia, Media and Elam, from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, from Pontus and Asia, from Phrygia and Pamphylia, from Egypt and the regions of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are from Rome, both Jews and Gentiles converted to Judaism, and some of us are from Crete and Arabia. Yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? But others made fun of the believers, saying, These people are drunk. Then Peter stood up with the other eleven apostles, and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd. Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me, and let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine o'clock in the morning. Instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. This is what I will do in the last days, God says. 
I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will pro proclaim my message. Your young men will see visions and your old men will have dreams. Yes, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will proclaim my message. I will perform miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood, fire and thick smoke. The sun will be darkened and the moon will turn red as blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And then whoever calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> And now Christine is going to read for us. This reading is taken from the Gospel of St John, verses, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Today is the Feast of Pentecost, 50 days since Easter Sunday, but originally it was a Jewish festival, 50 days, Pentecost means 50, it's Greek, 50 days from the Passover festival. Um, <coughs> in case you need reminding, the Passover festival commemorated the Jews escape from slavery in Egypt, led by Moses, and they cross the Red Sea without any of them drowning. And so <clears throat> the feast of the Passover was very, very important to the Jews. Pharaoh had negotiated, or rather Moses had negotiated with Pharaoh, many times to let his people go and each time when Moses thought that he succeeded Pharaoh sent his soldiers and called them back <clears throat> and so the tenth attempt with the help of the angel of the Lord Moses declared that the firstborn of every family would die <coughs> and so that this wouldn't happen to Jewish people he ordered them to kill a lamb and dip herbs in the blood of the lamb and wipe the lintel of their houses and the doorposts with the blood of the lamb and so when the angel of death passed over them they would be saved and only the firstborn of the Egyptians would die. And it was this dreadful happening that eventually made Pharaoh agree to the slaves leaving his country. But even then he changed his mind and as we all know that the warriors from Egypt drowned in the Red Sea as they were chasing the Israelites across. 
So the feast of the Passover was very, very important. And Jesus and his disciples had gone to Jerusalem to celebrate this feast. But the elders of the Jewish church were quite convinced that Jesus was a rabble rouser. He was up to no good. He didn't, he argued with the ways that the Jews uh, looked after their church and their synagogue, etc. And so they set a trap for him and made sure that it was the Romans who killed him, not them. And he was put to death on the Friday afternoon in good time to be done before the evening began for the feast of the Passover, which began at sunset on the Friday. Fifty days later, the disciples are gathered together again in this room in Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. And they're very frightened because the elders of the synagogue, they had got rid of the leader of this gang, but there were still all the followers. And the disciples were very frightened that their lives were in danger. But something miraculous happened. Jesus had promised that even though he wouldn't be with them any longer, he would send a spirit to help them, to give them courage. And no one knows quite what it was about. Everyone could explain today the uh, moving of the waves in the Red Sea. It was a tsunami. We, all, we know all about tsunamis, don't we? But no one quite knew why and what this mighty wind was that roared through the house and the tons of flame which sat on everyone's head. What was it? But it made these cowering, frightened men into courageous warriors. And they went out and started to tell the people about Jesus and his teachings and what it meant and what his crucifixion had meant. And everyone who heard them understood what they were saying, even though, as Graham read out, they were from all parts of the Mediterranean and spoke different languages. And so that was what happened at this Jewish festival of Pentecost. Now for hundreds of years, we in England and in the West have called this particular Sunday Whit Sunday and Whit Tide, and tomorrow will be Whit Monday Bank Holiday. But there are certain people who don't like movable feasts. They think Easter and Whitson should be fixed dates just like Christmas makes life easier for people fixing school holidays, continental holidays, all sorts of other things. And in the, I think, the early 70s, they got their way and it was agreed that wit would be a fixed holiday, the last Monday in May. And so we have this division between the secular bank holiday and our Christian Whitson. And who decided that it would no longer be called Whit, but would become Pentecost, as it originally had been, I don't know. But quite by coincidence, this year, it doesn't always happen, but Passover and Easter were the same weekend. The Jewish Pentecost and our Christian Pentecost is this weekend. 
and spring bank holiday is tomorrow. So they all have come together. But I'm afraid I still think of it as wit. And my husband, who is, I suppose he'd call himself a devout agnostic, he said to me this morning, he said, it's the proper wit this weekend, isn't it? So there you go, some of us have very long memories. So, with the inspiration of the disciples, let us stand to confess our faith. <coughs> Do you believe and trust in God the Father, who made all things? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The risen Lord, sorry, the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also so with, with you. you. Last week we shook hands all round, but can I tell you to not get too close? There's Covid in Elsham. Peace be with you. Peace with you, Mrs. Sugden, Margaret. Yes, peace be with, with you. you. You're all right. Yeah. Good job.
comes down, by the way. Coming. Our offertory hymn is Our Blessed Redeemer, Ere He Breathed. Alan doesn't know what tune we want, so we'll just have to see. Before our prayers, I received a message midweek that we now have a new bishop in Lincoln. Is the, um, what is his name somewhere? Stephen. Stephen Conway, who has been the acting bishop for about the last 18 months, but his appointment has been confirmed now by the Prime Minister and he will be going to the King to uh, show his allegiance and then presumably he will be enthroned this autumn. So <clears throat> I have not included him in our prayers but if you will think of him um, and pray for him yourselves that will be a good thing. Holy Spirit unpredictable in the wind, unquenchable as fire, yes, yet gentle as a dove. Come now and breathe new energy into our lives and new life into our souls by your precious power. Let us pray. 
Holy Spirit, visit the peoples of the world who suffer from wars and famine and natural disasters. Bring hope to them. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, who on this day gave power to St. Peter to speak of Christ and his love for us all, kindle that power in us. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we pray for Charles our King and his ministers. Instill in all people in authority, honesty, reliability, and integrity. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, breathe on all people who suffer physical pain or mental anguish. Bring your healing peace. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, bring comfort to all who walk the dark journey of death and are now in your presence. Bring comfort to all those who mourn, who are distressed by regrets and angry with God for their loss. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us rededicate ourselves to God. All through this week, our Father, help us to know you better and to make you better known by doing what pleases you and giving ourselves for the service of others. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. <clears throat> Let us say together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And now our final hymn, We Have a Gospel. Oh, 
Amen.